In this video, I will show you how to read data from a blockchain. We will use simple scripts written in JavaScript. This is beginner level and you don't need to know anything about blockchain in order to follow. If you are new here, I'm Julian and on Eat the Blocks, I help you to become a Web3 expert so that you can make more money, get more freedom and work on projects that you love. So in this video, we are going to focus on Ethereum. But why Ethereum? There are many blockchains out there. There is Solana, there is Polygon, Avalanche, etc. Well, it turns out that Ethereum is the most popular blockchain out there. Most of the decentralized applications that you will interact with are on Ethereum or on other blockchain that are based on the Ethereum technology. So how is it going to work? So we're going to have our backend where we have scripts written in JavaScript. This script will interact with a blockchain API. This blockchain API is a service that runs blockchain nodes for you. Blockchain nodes are the software that runs the blockchain. Blockchain nodes are very difficult to run by yourself. So that's why we have to go through a service. And after this blockchain API service is going to let us interact with the blockchain including the smart contract. So if you never heard of smart contract, these are small programs that run on the blockchain. So the first step is to create a free account on a blockchain API service. There are many out there, but the one we're going to use is Infura. So you go to the website of Infura, you create a free account. And after you create a project, so you select Web3 API, and it's going to let you access different blockchain, including Ethereum. So you scroll down, and where you see Ethereum mainnet, it's going to give you a URL that you can use to access the blockchain. So you are going to copy this and we're going to use it later. So after that, you will have to create an NPM project. So you go in your terminal, you run this command. And after we are going to install the ethers library. So this is a JavaScript library that we can use to, to easily interact with Ethereum. In theories, you could interact with Ethereum without ethers, but the API of Ethereum is quite low level and it would be difficult to do it that way. So it's way easier to use ethers. And after we're going to start our first script and our first script will allow us to read a block number. So the blockchain is composed of a series of blocks and in each block you have a list of transactions. Each block has a number and these numbers follow each other. So here is our script to read the current block number. So first we import the ethers library. And after that, we are going to instantiate a provider object. So this provider object allows us to communicate with the blockchain. So here we are using ethers version six, and you can call this JSON RPC provider object directly on the ether object. It wasn't like this in ethers V5. So if you read docs and you find something else, don't be confused. Then we have to pass the URL that we got from Infura. And after that, we'll be able to get our block number. But first we need to create an async function because we're going to use the await keyword. In our function on the provider object, we're going to execute the get block number function and we get our block number. And after we console log it, and after we are going to run this script in our terminal, so we get the current block number. And if you wait 15 seconds and you run the script again, you're going to get the next block number because on average, there is a new block on Ethereum every 15 seconds. So congratulations, you have just read data from the blockchain. Very easy. Our next script will be to read the ether balance of an address. So on Ethereum, everybody can create an address and each address has an associated balance of ether. So we start our script by importing ethers. Then we have our provider objects. So far, everything is like in the previous script. We also need to create an async function. And this time on the provider object, we're going to use the get balance function and we're going to pass the address that we're going to read. So the address is something that starts with a zero X. And here I took the address of a Vitalik buttering. And here an interesting note is that instead of a literal address, like I use here, you can also use ENS. So ENS Ethereum name service is basically like URL, but for Ethereum addresses. And so if you pass as argument vitalik.eth, you're going to get the same result. So the ethers library is smart enough to resolve ENS names. So then you get this balance object. 
And this banks object is actually not a number, but this is an instance of the big number library because the ether balance can be bigger than the biggest number that can be represented in JavaScript. So we need to use a library to handle this. And this number will be in way. So this is basically the elementary unit of ether. It's way smaller than one ether. One ether equals 10 power 18 way. And so to get this in a format that makes more sense for us, we're going to use the format ether function. So once again, this is with ether v6. If you read the documentation of v5, format ether is under a namespace. So now it's more simple. So we get the result in formatted balance. And after we just console log it and we can run the script and we'll see the result. Okay. And our last script will be to read data from a smart contract. So we're going to read data from USDC. So USDC is an ERC20 token. So ERC20 tokens are digital assets that lives within the blockchain. So Ethereum itself has a built-in asset, which is called Ether, but you can also create your own digital asset with this ERC20 tokens. And each ERC20 token is represented by a smart contract. And one of the biggest ERC20 token out there is USDC. So in order to interact with a smart contract, we need to instantiate an ethers contract object and we're going to pass it different information. So the address of USDC, then we need the ABI of USDC. So the ABI will describe the interface of the smart contract. And this is going to be an array with the function signatures of our smart contract. So you don't need to list absolutely all function. You just need to list the function that you are going to use. Here we have two function balance of that gives us the token balance of a specific address and then decimals which tells us how many decimals this ERC20 token use. So most of them use 18 decimals like ethers, but in the case of USDC, it's different. So we pass our ABI and the next object is the provider object that allows us to communicate with the blockchain. And in the end, we get this USDC object that we can use to communicate with our smart contract. Like before, we create this async function and on the USDC object, we call the balance of function to get our token balance. So here we pass the address that we're interested in. So that means we're going to get the token balance of this address. Then in the balance object, so like before, this is a big number object. This is not a traditional JavaScript number. Then we also get the decimals. And so after we're going to use the format units function. So this is similar to format ether, except that it can do it with an arbitrary number of decimal. So this is very useful to format the balance of yes, 20 tokens. And at the end, we're going to console log this balance. All right, congratulations. Now you know how to read data from the blockchain. And next, if you want to know how you can get into Web3 and find a job in the industry, check out my free masterclass. The link is down below. It's going to give you a full roadmap of what you need to learn in order to become a Web3 developer and what you need to do to find a job in the industry. All right, that's it for this video. Bye.